Welcome back to uh, Inside the Cardinal Playbook, a segment I'm excited about. I'll learn a little bit about a sport that I honestly don't know very much about, and that's soccer. And Coach Robley, I, you know, uh, we've got a little background. You know, I was over at Blue Springs when you were playing in Winnetonka, but uh, having uh, have got your four or five games into the season, you got one, uh, the women's team's ranked 13th in the country, and uh, uh, the guys are, you know, uh, Again, it sounds like with a couple overtime situations you've had in the past weekend that they're playing pretty solid, too. Doing pretty well. Uh, the women are undefeated right now. We're 4-0. Um, the men are 1-3, uh, lost to the number five ranked uh, team in the nation, and then had a couple overtime losses. Uh, that's part of it. We obviously would want to be a part of the better side of overtime, but um, we're going to have more games like that in the future this season, more games where we're likely going to play overtime. Hopefully we get the, the better of those situations. You know, uh, going to Division Two, and I haven't had a chance to talk to you on a one-on-one -on -one basis like this, so I might just shoot it at you now. How do you how do you like being in Division Two? I've mean, I've talked to almost to all the other coaches. You know, I love it. You know, it's uh, it's we're in an extremely competitive conference. The GLVC is one of the best soccer conferences in the nation for men and women, and um, uh, so we know every single game uh, we're going to be in a battle. And every other uh, team in the conference is going to be in battle as well. Um, you know, the men's game, it's literally like tossing a coin up as far as who really is going to get the better of the game. Uh, hopefully we are. But uh, on the women's side, even just to show you the competitiveness of the women's side, I think the most goals scored by any team this past weekend or on Sunday was two goals in a game. So the games were 2 nothing, 2 one one nothing, 0-0. Zero, zero. From top to bottom, maybe the best conference in all of Division II women's college soccer. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about women's soccer. And I, I told you before we started that the, the Franklin girl is a Truman girl. And of course, I grew up in Independence, and her, her grandfather's on a uh, Hall of Fame thing with me in Independence. And uh, great people, great. But I know her from being the AD and stuff at Blue Spring. She's a, she's a great competitor. She's very competitive. She is a uh, huge asset to the team. Uh, she scores goals, she works hard, she's an outstanding student. Um, so she was a All-American forward for us last year, right. and she was a Scholar All-American in the classroom as well, and she's one of our captains. Um, so she's, a, uh, she's very good for the team on and off the field. Uh, we like her. Yeah, you know, I think she really fits the William Jewell mold because of her, you know, she's a very, very good student. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, William Jewell's known for its academics. There's no Absolutely. question about that. And I know all of it, from activities, all the activities feel the same way you do, Coach, that that's, that's mm -hmm. a real positive for the university. Uh, but uh, let's talk a little bit about the boys. Uh, we gave kudos to the girls already. They're 13th in the nation. They're undefeated. But uh, uh, some guys that you might want to name to throw out to, to, to talk about a little bit this season that you think have really improved from last year. Well, you know, we've got three captains on the team, um, Chad Newman and Zane Christensen and Shane Bolin, uh, that all were starters for us last year as well. And those guys are, you can tell, trying to uh, take the reins and, and be leaders uh, with the team this year. Um, and then we've got a lot of newcomers to the team. You know, we've got uh, one player from junior college, Cody Braden, who's doing really well. We have Drew Dempsey, who transferred from DePaul. He's a sophomore. He's doing well. And then we've got a lot of returning players that are really competing for playing time and, and uh, uh, working hard practice, uh, which is a great sign saying that, you know, we're going to be competitive for the rest of the year as well. Um, so we, really we have 31 players on the men's team, 26 players on the women's team. Everyone on both teams is working very hard at practice. Well, let's talk a little bit about the conference. Uh, and I didn't know that. I didn't know it was a great soccer conference. Yeah. Uh, I got to do the, some of the uh, football preseason stuff. But, I, I, you know, I follow the other sports, you know, and, you know, it is a very good conference. Yeah. Uh, who's, who's the really big games to look forward to the remainder of the season before you uh, get into the, you know, meat and potatoes of the playoffs and that type of thing? Um, on the men's side, uh, the, when we came into the conference three years ago, the defending national champion in Division right. Two was Northern Kentucky, who yeah. was in the conference. Then they moved up to Division One. So we had, that was actually our first conference game on the road. It's a great game. way to start, isn't it? It was a great way to start. And then, um, but we've had uh, Rockhurst, who's our travel partner. When we right. go play someone on the road, they go play another team. And then we have different opponents Friday, Sunday. Um, they're doing really well, and they're always a rival that we play the last game of the regular season is against Rockhurst. Um, this year will be at Rockhurst, so that's always a fun game. 
Um, but Lewis in Chicago has been to the Division II Final Four. Um, Wisconsin Parkside has a lot of tradition. Um, and then uh, Drury is always a competitive game. We've played them the last three years. We've gone to overtime with them all three years. Our first game in the GLBC ever actually home game was against Drury, and we beat them in a dramatic overtime win. So, um, you know, there's a lot of teams in the conference that are great. UMSL in Missouri-St. Louis has huge tradition in Division II. Um, and Quincy has great tradition as well. So a lot of teams that have had a lot of soccer success over the last 20 years, and uh, it's a lot of fun playing those teams week in, week out. Uh, you know, looking uh, to the future, you know, you, you really look at your girls, and I, I, was following, I have followed you uh, since we've gone to Division Two. They've been very solid and been able to play with the big, big women in town. Yeah, you know, um, uh, our men and women were both nationally ranked at one time you during bet. the season. The women then went on to be make the national tournament. Uh, our conference on the women's side, it's so competitive that the most teams we can have qualify for the national tournament from a conference is five. And with Truman State coming into the conference um, this year, Kentucky Wesleyan out, um, that makes six teams in our conference that actually qualified for the NCAA tournament last year. So somebody who made it last year right. isn't going to make it this right. year. Um, and there doesn't have to be. When we could have only one team from our conference is the, the minimum. Right. But there's no saying we had to have five. So, um, so that's how competitive it is. Uh, and the women definitely have more than held their own. Well, Coach, it's really great having you on. I hope you'll be back again. Good luck in your season. You know, you're going to get really after it here before long, oh, yeah. and you'll be playing a lot of those people we oh, just yeah. talked about. So yep. good luck to you and both teams. And, again, we'll, we'll be back. We're inside the Cardinal Playbook in the next segment.